All right, Mr. Medellin here again. Uh, Mr. M, I love students call me Mr. M. Uh, right now we're gonna be covering grids. And again, I'm referencing the textbook. If you wanna make sure that you take a look at the textbook, I'm using the principles of radiographic imaging. And this is actually taken from chapter 18, if you have this textbook. And all the information about grids can be found in chapter 18. So number one, we have to know what a grid is. So a grid is a device that attenuates scatter. So it attenuates scatter before it reaches where? Okay, before it reaches the receptor itself. So grids are a device that attenuates scatter before it reaches the IR. So when do we use grids? <laughs> well, we use grids if the body part thickness exceeds more than 10 or 12 centimeters and you're using more than 60 kVp. So, how does it do it? How does it attenuate it? What material is inside a grid? So grids have lines of lead, right? So there's lines of lead, or sometimes they call it uh, lead strips, right? So lines of lead, that's an L right there, lines of lead or lead strips that are gonna attenuate the scatter. So we said that grids are indicated Right, to be used when the body part thickness, <laughs> and depending on what textbook you read, that's why I'm using a, a range of 10 to 12 centimeters, when the body part thickness exceeds or goes over, we said 10 to 12 centimeters. Now again, that's using a caliper to measure the body part, correct? And I'm gonna tell you right now, you guys, we don't use calipers, I, I wish we did use more of it, but nobody busts out a caliper, right? If anything, they use them for sword fights, shoe worn, <laughs> scratching your back. But we don't really use calipers, but we should because it increases, uh, it increases the chances of you getting a correct uh, technique for the body part according to the part thickness. It reduces the chance of repeats. All right, so grids are indicated for body parts that increase body part thickness of 10 to 12 centimeters or the KVP is more than 60. And, and here's the thing, any digital system, imaging system requires 60 KVP and above just to record the signal. But it's not for every body part because if you're doing a hand, is that gonna require the use of a grid? No, because it doesn't exceed 10 or 12 centimeters, correct? So if you're doing a lumbar spine, right, especially on me, you're gonna have to use more KVP, more mass, I'm gonna produce more scatter. So obviously you're gonna have to use a grid. So grids, we said, attenuate scatter. So grids improve contrast. So we're gonna explain exactly how they do that. So they're gonna improve contrast. In fact, they give us what's known as a higher contrast. And if you have high contrast, you're gonna have a shorter scale. So we're gonna do a video just on contrast itself. So we'll go over grayscale. Uh, long scale, short scale, but this time we're gonna focus on the grid itself. So <clears throat> what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna draw exactly what's happening uh, with the grid and what a grid looks like in terms of construction. We'll describe grid frequency and we'll talk about uh, grid ratio. All right, so we'll do a separate video for uh, grid uh, conversions. So we'll do the conversion factors, we'll do the math in a separate video for everybody, okay? So let's do, The grid construction. Construction. So we have lead strips. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go ahead, let's say this was a grid, this stack of paper here, and you can't see it, but there's lines of lead that run through it. But if we turn the grid now on its back, we're gonna see lines of lead. And we're never really gonna see these things, you guys, because usually they're built into the system. But there's gonna be lines of lead. So I'm gonna make them a little thick here. I'm trying to make it even. If it's not uniform, that's okay, it's still gonna work. So the grid construction is gonna have lines of lead. So the number, the number of lead lines per inch or centimeter is gonna be known as grid frequency. So how is this different between grid ratio? So grid ratio now, I'm gonna put it on this side. Everybody knows the formula for grid ratio, right? It's gonna be H over D. 
So grid ratio is H over D. And what does that stand for? It stands for the height, right, over the distance between the lead strip. So H over D. So remember, we're looking at the grid line on its back. So what you would do is you would measure the height of the lead strip, and this is H. And again, we're never going to be measuring these grids, you guys, so don't worry about this. We have to know it. Just, we have to know it. So the grids, the height is H. The distance is also known as the inner space. So the distance from one lead strip to the next, that's going to be D. So D is going to be distance. So that's the distance from one lead strip to the next. That's also known as the, the inner space distance, right? So let's make up some numbers. I like to use H, let's say it's four millimeters in, in height. I used this the other day, that's why I'm using it again right now. The distance between the, the, the lead strip, let's say it's 0 0.25 millimeter. All right, so that's a five right there. So we said H over D. So if you have four divided by 2.5, 0 0.25, so 0 0.25, let's go ahead and do the math here. I'm gonna pull out my, my calculator here. So we got four divided by 0.25, we end up with 16. So this grid ratio is 16 to one, all right? Now we're never gonna to have to go ahead and do this in the field, I gotta tell you. But we gotta do it for our exams, we gotta do it for the AAT exam maybe possibly. But again, this is how they determine grid ratio. So, as you increase the number of lines of lead, you're increasing the frequency, correct? Well, if you have more lines of lead and you have more lead content, you're also increasing grid ratio. So, on a separate video, we'll talk about the grid conversion factors and we'll talk exactly, exactly how it's gonna influence our receptor exposure and our mass selection when we talk about the conversion. But this is how we get grid construction. So one of the other things I'm going to talk about right now is going to be the different types of grids that we have. So a lot of questions that I get is, Mr. Ram, what's the difference between a parallel grid and a focus grid? And again, the lines aren't going to be all matched up, but that's okay. So a parallel grid, you guys, or a linear grid, have lines of lead that are just going to be parallel to each other. But a focus grid, is gonna have lines that are parallel in the middle, but they're gonna incline as they go outward. All right, now, if you remember, the X-ray beam doesn't just come down in a straight path. What does it do? If you guys remember the production of X-rays, it diverges, correct? It comes down at an angle. So when it comes down at an angle, I'm gonna change this to yellow. All right, so when the X-ray beam comes down, it's gonna come down like this, but then it's gonna diverge at an angle. So a lot of times, the primary radiation is gonna be attenuated by the lines of lead themselves. So with the focus grid, the inclined lines of lead, they're designed to try to match the divergence of the X-ray beam. So it's gonna allow more of the primary radiation to go through. So that's the difference between a, a linear parallel grid and a focus grid. So they're designed specifically to match the divergence of the X-ray beam, all right? Now, where this X-ray beam meets, that's gonna be known as the line of convergence, okay? The line of convergence is also in the reading. And then the distance from the line of convergence to the grid is known as grid radius. So there has to be a specific distance that is designed for that grid. So when we get into the grid errors and there's an off focus error, that means that the grid radius is surpassing the distance that is meant and designed to match to the grid, to be allowing the x-rays to go through and then the scattered radiation to be absorbed. All right, so again, the line of convergence is gonna be where the beam is gonna go ahead and meet as these beams come upward. And then the radius is just the distance from the line of convergence to the, to the grid itself. So, Again, grids are designed to attenuate scatter radiation, and you know that scatter is just always gonna be produced, and it's gonna be coming from what interaction? It's gonna be Compton effect, okay? So, grids are designed to absorb scatter radiation that's coming from the Compton effect. All right, we're gonna stop right here, and then we're gonna no do another video, and we're gonna focus on the grid conversion factors themselves, okay? All right, thank you.